are you asking if there is a soul made for everyone? <laughs> yes, that's my question. Now you must understand this. Sadhguru explained, his eyes alive and bright as the reflection of the fire danced across his face. Mating is always of the body. <laughs> it is a body requirement. Maybe it is also of the mind and the emotions. But the process of mating belongs to the body to some extent and to the mind to some extent. The soul cannot mate with anything, nor does the soul need a mate because it is absolute and boundless. Only what is limited needs a mate in order to feel little better. This line of thinking, though logical, sounded quite stark and not the least bit romantic or fun. Why do you choose a mate? Mm, I guess to find fulfillment. You want your body to feel a little better. <laughs> we call that sexuality. It can be quite beautiful. We want our mind to feel a little better. We call that companionship. We want our emotions to feel better and we call that love. Emotional compatibility makes it very beautiful and sweet. But that is as far as it goes. Experiencing a good physical compatibility, companionship and a strong sense of love in many ways can make your life very wonderful. But if you are willing to look at all this very carefully and sincerely, you cannot deny the limitations with which it exists. And the anxiety that naturally follows such an arrangement, though it is quite a fortune for a human being to find someone who is physically, mentally and emotionally compatible, the limitedness of that arrangement invariably becomes suffocating if you are unwilling to settle for the limited. To have such a pleasant arrangement is like living in a beautiful garden. Every human being wants to have this, but this is not a matter of soul. All the connections you make this way are either of body, mind or emotions. You cannot connect anything else this way. Maybe if you rise in your awareness and attain a certain mastery over your energies, you can connect your energies. It is extremely important that we understand the limitations with which we are living and try to make the best of them for now and then see how we can go beyond our limitations tomorrow. If you do not understand the limitations of your relationship, it gets greatly decorated, but when it crashes, it becomes so ugly, you cannot even walk out of it gracefully. It becomes ugly simply because you tell many lies to yourself and to the other person. It is better to be straight, at least with yourself. Even if your partner lacks the necessary maturity for you to be hundred percent straight with him, <laughs> at least to yourself, you must be straight. It is very important. If you want to live sensibly and joyfully, it is extremely important that you should not fool yourself. It is all right to fool the other person. <laughs> <laughs> you already know he is a fool because he has provided sufficient proof of that as he has come to you. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks a lot, I said, and also laughed, even though I found his humor funnier or more charming when it was directed toward anyone other than me. Only if you are straight with yourself will you know the value of offering that to another human being. So it does not matter, with him, you do whatever you think is best for you and him. My business is not what you are doing with somebody else. What you do with someone else is just social. My business is just with you, basic you, with yourself. You must be straight. It is very, very important to be straight with yourself. Otherwise, life won't work right. If you are very straight with yourself, you will see through things very easily. There are lots of things that people think are important that won't matter to you or even make much sense to you. The more sincere you are with yourself, the clearer you will see things. And the less melodrama you will add to things in order to make your life more intense and interesting. Without all the melodrama, 
you will become freer and freer and you will quickly become less entangled. You will cut away one encumbering rope at a time, then you will rise higher and higher to elevated realities. If you do not become absolutely straight with yourself, it may take a lifetime to deal with every little thing that disturbs you before you finally come to the point where you realize that all your worry was not getting you anywhere. You will need a full lifetime, that is a waste of your time and life. But if you are very straight with yourself, you will see that most of the things that are highly romanticized in the world actually mean nothing, actually mean nothing. They are all very empty. Life is full as it is. It does not need decorating. Only those who are missing the intensity of the life process, those who are not in perception of the grandeur of life within, have this juvenile idea that they have to enhance life. Life process does not need any assistance from you to become beautiful. If only you are willing to merge with it and know its beauty. He then picked up a branch to reposition a couple of the logs in the fire. He also then added another large log and the fire was soon a large roaring blaze again. He continued, Does this mean you should not enjoy the simple aspects of life? No, let us apply it to this moment. If you eat your dinner, will you get enlightened? No, <laughs> but that does not mean we don't eat dinner. We eat. Why can't we enjoy the simple process of life? We will eat because we are hungry. Even though dinner is not going to get us to the ultimate, we still enjoy our dinner. Our bodies are hungry. Similarly, if you are hungry in your emotions, your body and your mind, for certain things, you get married. But you know very well that this is not the ultimate. This is a good way, a sensible way to handle your marriage. If you believe too many fancy things about it, then it cannot help but disappoint you. One day, it is definitely going to crash in on you. Even if you are married to the most wonderful person in the world, it will still crash because you cannot fool yourself forever. These arrangements are made to make our life journey pleasant for ourselves, also for those around us. What you call peace, joy and love are different levels of pleasantness.